This podcast looks at atmospheric pressure and the invention of the barometer by Evangelista Torricelli. Uh, so he's a good looking guy and he was an Italian physicist and best known for his invention of the barometer which measures air pressure. So what he did was he had a container of mercury and a giant glass tube that he filled completely with mercury, inverted it, placed it into the container of mercury, um, allowed it to flow until the atmospheric pressure was equal to the fluid pressure coming down from the glass tube. You'll notice the top of the glass tube is a vacuum, um, which means an absence of matter. So we have an equivalent pressure between the fluid pressure and the atmospheric pressure. I'm going to show you a YouTube video of one that's actually created. We're going to make a barometer. And what I have here is a glass tube that's about 800 millimeters long. And I've filled it with mercury almost to the top. Now I'm going to finish filling it so that I get filled all the way to the very top. And then I'm going to put my finger over the end and I'm going to invert it into the mercury. I'm going to set it here and use our clamp to hold it. Now, what's keeping this mercury column so high? It's that atmospheric pressure pushing down on the mercury, pushing this up. And let's see how tall our column is. 744 millimeters. It doesn't matter what size the diameter of our tube is, as long as it's relatively small. You can see this one's really small. I have another one that's almost twice the diameter of this one. So that showed you how to create a mercury barometer, and that's exactly what Torricelli did when creating his barometer. So the standard was, it was 760 millimeters of mercury was supported at sea level. You'll notice in the video, it was 744 millimeters of mercury, which shows that there's not as much pressure, and she is obviously not at sea level. That is equivalent to 101.3 kilopascals. That's where we normally see um, our, how we express pressure if you go to the weather network. Um, if you take a look at this picture of a column of air at sea level and above sea level, you'll see that there is a greater uh, collision uh, frequency as you get closer to sea level. Okay, and this is why the number of millimeters of mercury was 760 millimeters of mercury. Because the atmosphere was pushing down pretty hard because of all these collisions, allowing the mercury to go back up as high as 760 millimeters. If you go higher, you'll see the number of particles are less. Okay, um, gravity is <coughs> pull it down quite as much. The collisions of particles are less. So the sea level, or sorry, so the pressure higher up is less. So this was, for example, 744 millimeters because wherever she was, she was higher than sea level. So you can see as you go higher up, pressure is less and there is less uh, collisions of particles allowing for less pressure. So the units that we will use in for this gases unit and the conditions that we will use are called SATP, which is the conditions of doing experiments at 100 kilopascals and 25 degrees Celsius. Um, often we do experiments with gases at STP, which is 101.3 kilopascals and zero degrees Celsius. And remember, we will convert those to Kelvin so we don't have the zero problem when doing some mathematical calculations. So what does SATP stand for? Okay, the S, the T, and the P all stand for the same thing. They stand for standard. Um, and then the T and the P are temperature and pressure. The A for SATP stands for ambient, which means comfortable working conditions. That's why it's at zero or 25 degrees. Um, and the rest is the same. So standard, ambient, temperature, and pressure is SATP, and STP is just not ambient, it's just at zero degrees. <clears throat> so we're going to be re usually referring to pressure in terms of kilopascals, that should be a capital P, 
and this is at sea level 101.3 kilopascals. Some units that we're going to have to convert to or be recognized as other units of pressure. ATM does not stand for the thing you get your money, but it stands for atmospheres. Okay, or based on Torricelli's work with the barometer, millimeters of mercury, or in his honor, we also call it Tor. So these are all equivalent to 101.3 kilopascals. You could also look at the American way of, me of measuring pressure, which is pounds per square inch, and bar is another one. We won't be referring to those ones as much. We'll be focusing more on atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, and of course, kilopascals. Okay, and that are units of pressure, units, and conditions.